Good day, everyone. Um, I'm very excited today to be joined by a very special person who is visiting us here in, uh, in Panama. Um, I'm honored to uh, sit at the table with Miss Sis Kelsey Gittens. Um, we have a topic that we were uh, recently talking, speaking about. Uh, Kelsey had a presentation by us in church. And I thought it was a very, very interesting topic. It was presented very well. But uh, we also thought it was something that needed to be spread to more people. Um, as I think it's a, it's a, it's a topic that um, touches a lot of us and a lot of young people. So if you're young, this is for you. If you're a parent, this is for you. Um, if you want um, some something interesting that is affecting a lot of the, uh, the youth among us, um, this is definitely a must watch. I would first of all like to start out with uh, Kelsey, uh, have her introduce herself. I just mentioned her name, but um, just um, let her indicate why this topic is so important and um, probably let you introduce the topic as well. I haven't given it away yet. So probably uh, you can do us the honors. What are we talking about today, Kelsey? So today we're talking about um, media addiction and in particular gaming. Um, gaming, which can become an addiction for many. And yeah, about what, yeah, what influence it has on people's lives. Uh, we say young people, but it's really a problem that's, that spans across different ages, different groups in society. And yeah, we're going to talk about how that affects people, but also what solutions there are to solve that problem, which are abundant. God gives us so many solutions and we just have a lot of good counsel and not only theoretical but also practical counsel so we're gonna talk about that amen great I'm, I'm very excited about this topic because I believe with everything as you just said every problem that we face in this world God already has a solution for it the only thing is a lot of time we haven't applied it yet mm. so I, I really want to just start with you why is this topic why is this a topic that you feel you need to speak about or that we need to speak about obviously I thought it was important or else you wouldn't be having this interview here as well um, but why for you is this an important topic um, to share with the world yeah, because, because it is a topic that's quite taboo, mm -hmm. uh, especially adults, uh, parents often are more, it's more of a thing they're ashamed of that mm -hmm. their children have or that the children struggle with. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't talk about it mm -hmm. and people don't know that it's a real issue that God has a real solution for. So oh, no. uh, that's why. Okay. And it's, um, this is something that has affected you. And I, I think that also makes it more, more real and something that you feel that we need to speak about because obviously when something affects you it's close to home mm -hmm. so you know um, what you were going through when you were going through the addiction or playing or whatnot and you know mm -hmm. which solution worked and what did not work yeah um, so um, probably that is something I, I want to know more about uh, when did you find out it was an issue for you so I have been gaming or playing video games since I was probably since I was around like five years old because I remember that uh, my preschool or like mm -hmm. uh, when I went to children's school mm -hmm. I didn't like it so much there and then I was sent back home and I was just learning on the computer actually so there were like these educational games on the computer mm -hmm. and I was just playing them and I was learning so fast because the I would like I was like in this year but I was like going ahead and skipping past different years and I knew all the stuff already because I was playing and oh, I was wow. learning yeah <laughs> so from then already I, I really enjoyed playing stuff on the computer mm. and uh, learning on the computer mm. and I guess everybody can identify with that how children mm -hmm. when you put them with the computer or whatever they can just get sucked in and that, I also enjoyed it and got sucked in from really small mm -hmm. and um, there was a point, so I played my whole life and I never saw really, well, okay, I never knew from the outside that there was an issue, mm -hmm. but inside I always sensed that there was, 
that God would not be happy with me spending this much time because mm -hmm. at a certain point I was spending like in the summers yeah. I would really look forward to summer because then I could literally just play all day uh -huh. take my food sit in the room and continue playing wow and um and <laughs> while eating <laughs> and uh in my heart I knew something wasn't right yeah because I, at that point when I started getting older I accepted Jesus for myself mm -hmm. and I, he was my friend and somehow in my heart I knew like he probably wouldn't do this himself mm. he wouldn't mm. spend hours sitting like this yeah but you don't see Jesus behind an Xbox <laughs> yeah I don't see him <laughs> sitting there for hours and hours and hours do and you there see him for a few minutes do. though yes well <laughs> and now I don't okay no. now you don't okay. now I feel like he knowing that people are outside needing his help he mm. would never sit there and uh spend time on that okay. but anyway we'll talk more about that yeah in a little while <laughs> but yeah that was the experience i had was that i at one point when i realized that it was a problem i uh thought to myself but how can i ever i couldn't really imagine my life without gaming you know mm -hmm. so i was like i just can't get free but god made a way and he showed me that it is possible yeah. through the example of people who were free mm -hmm. and that really helped me to just knowing that it was possible helped me to kind of be real with myself and with God mm -hmm. that I needed to get out. To get out. Yeah. Okay, v very interesting. A few things that you just said that I think is important and a lot of us deal with it. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times parents say it's okay because the games are educational. Um, and usually that's the way gaming sneaks in because parents feel like, hey, yeah, you see, at least they're learning something. Yeah. And from my own experience, I have four daughters. Um, I know as soon as you put them in front of a screen, they're quiet. Yeah. They're not bothering you for a while. You get to do what you need to do. Yeah. And they are entertained. And especially with the idea like they are being educated, you just leave them alone. Yeah, it's like um, the best of both worlds, right? The best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, but in your experience, does it really work that way? Because you said you were being educated because you were learning and you were uh, ahead. Um, so that's something good, right? Why? why? Well, you know, that's it. everything. People also say, you know how people say like, yeah, but wine is good because <laughs> it has in the antioxidants that make you not have cancer. Uh -huh. So wine is good. But either if you can choose between drinking pure orange juice or orange juice with some poison or some Clorox inside of it, mm -hmm. then I would by all means say like choose the orange juice without Clorox. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, a lot of times these educational games mm -hmm. uh, we need to be really careful with them because mm -hmm. it's almost like you're wetting their taste mm -hmm. for this kind of material and they will it doesn't it, it's like a car that's rolling downhill mm -hmm. you know it it goes in one direction yeah it doesn't go in the opposite direction so once a child starts playing certain types of games mm -hmm. just games in general it's very difficult to make them want to not play anymore yeah. you know <laughs> so they will always want to play more so yeah. yeah that's why i think it's something to really pray about and consider how much you want to let your child be involved with that yeah and there's where you can see kind of the deception i always have heard or uh, this is a nice um saying that uh, the best poison is 99 percent good and then the one drop of poison that's what's going to Yes. do the damage nobody's going to drink a bottle of clorox yeah. but if you put a drop of clorox in apple juice yeah you keep drinking you get, it you and drinking it's eventually. palatable yeah uh, you're gonna keep going back and you're gonna keep being able to tolerate more and more of the chlor and that's what yeah the dangerous that's part. what the danger is yeah so i definitely believe that um that that is uh, true and uh, and i think that that may be one of the first uh things that parents have to look at um, redefine what education is and what type of education we need to give our children because even that we have we have counsels on that um, because a lot of times we think we need to pump our three-year-olds five-year-olds they need to know this and that by an X amount of uh, when they're three they need to be able to read Mm -hmm. uh, when they're four, they need to be able to do all of algebra. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we want to prepare them for university by by ten, yeah. um, and that's the pressure that we get from also outside. And um, sometimes that is something that can um, cause us to think that there's no harm in um, exposing our children yeah. To because these types sometimes of we we put the it's as if the uh, what do you say like 
the holy grail mm -hmm. of a child's existence mm -hmm. is to succeed academically. Mm -hmm. So if this game is causing them, them to advance academically, mm -hmm. th there can be it can do no wrong, you know? It oh. can be nothing wrong because that's what's important. But yeah, we we have in the Bible and in Ellen White's writings counsel that show us clearly that life is more it's about more than academic, academics, okay. you know, as children. And, and we'll talk about also how the practical things of life are also extremely important for yes. development. Yes, definitely. And we, that, that's something we have to uh, um, stick a pin at and that we need to come back uh, on. Mm -hmm. um, there, uh, what we're talking about is basically a method that we know that the evil one is using to attack our young people, which is media. He uses the media. And he attacks a certain area that God thinks is important. He attacks the mind, right? Um, why, and maybe you can talk a little about that. How does this media games, how does it attack the mind? How, um, I don't know if you, in your experience, how you have experienced the attack. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can talk a little about that and um, yeah maybe share as to how this eventually affect because there are a lot of people that are playing say yeah i'm not i'm doing well at school man i'm yeah, getting I'm all a's I'm, it's not affected i have a, someone very close to me tell me yeah man, i still get all my grades they're good yeah, so what's the problem what matters. you guys are yeah. talking about yeah I, I i definitely can relate to that kind of feeling of like yeah it doesn't affect me and we want to believe that it doesn't affect us, mm -hmm. but you know, the Bible says that by beholding, we become changed. Uh -huh. The things that we spend our time with, uh -huh. even if it's a small amount of time, they mm -hmm. affect us. They mm -hmm. really, really influence us. And even if we meet a person, you know, like within a few hours with that person, they are affecting you. The, mm -hmm. That person is having an influence on you. So everything we're dealing with has an influence on us. Mm -hmm. And certainly gaming and uh, media use, um, it can have an influence especially when it comes to um yeah it's it, it can it molds who we become and mm -hmm. it affects us and and the thing is for god mm -hmm. it doesn't sometimes we we try to be as close to the as close to the danger without getting burned like mm -hmm. as close to fire as possible without getting burned but god expects and hopes and wants for us that we stay as far as possible away, away. from it mm -hmm. so um i think I've experienced that even if it was, um, even if I didn't want to believe it, mm -hmm. I saw that um, my threshold, because I had from very young, I mm. have a very, I had a very sensitive conscience, mm. you know? So my brother would be like, D -d 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 shooting people, and I'd be like, ah, no! Uh. I would just be watching it and be like, no, I'm not like that. Uh -huh. But I would play like these smaller games that were not as intense. Yeah. But over time, mm -hmm. I started also playing those uh, Call of Duty and what? Grand Theft Big Auto. Things? Yeah, <laughs> and playing the, and I saw in my own life how indeed it's it it goes one direction. Mm -hmm. It's not up, it's down. It's a gradual. You start doing more things yes. that are not uh, are not kosher. In as a lot you can of ways, say. it's it's like alcohol. You know, you mm -hmm. start with maybe you know wine or whatever, mm -hmm. but eventually it gets to be more and more um you you need your your receptors or your tolerance for it goes mm. hi higher or lower you know you get less sensitive so you need more yeah so no I, I get you because in there's where i can identify because i'm also from the the grand theft auto era and um i know how that affected me back then uh, there's one year that i had a television in my room um and that's the year that i failed flunked and because uh no temperance i was on that thing all the time playing grand theft auto and one thing actually struck me um and it never left uh left me since then um the way the bible says as a man think it so is he mm -hmm. right and the fact that i wanted to um, rob somebody from their car I wanted to go and visit the prostitutes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do all these missions and shooting and be a gangster. And that that is something that is going on in your mind. It shows you that your mind is there's something wrong there. Morally, yes. there's something wrong. It's definitely being affected. Exactly. Yeah. And, and sometimes you feel but hey, at least um, we uh, can distinguish from 
fiction and reality and it's only the people that are, uh, are crazy are going to do something like that in real life mm -hmm. to be honest I don't even believe it's the people that, the people that can distinction between reality and fiction I believe some people have more guts than others um, for example some of us that play those games we're just scared to get caught mm -hmm. we're just scared to so reap the consequences people have said that you're only as bad as you're allowed to be yeah so if you would not be punished for that you might you know and and yeah that's the dangerous thing yeah and that god goes doesn't to want us to live like that actually. exactly because it goes to show where our mind actually is what we would want to do why do i find pleasure yeah, in stealing pleasure? a car it's actually really sick when you think about it why should i take joy in taking a katana sword and chopping somebody's head off why should that be fun you know that's really sick you know as and when you yeah, so for me, when I, I think a big part of it is I don't, I didn't want to be honest with myself, but uh -huh. when I finally did, and yeah. I thought like, would Jesus be here chopping people up? Yeah. You know, like would he have joy in that? Yeah. No, I, I think it's quite clear that he would not. Yeah, no, definitely. So that one hit home by me as well. Like, man, uh, Ruben, you're you're kind of a sick person <laughs> that you want to, to actually you enjoyed playing this game so much, and um, but. I think it's necessary for you to come to that point yourself and then um, at that moment you seek um, how can we how can we solve this um, we don't want to get into solution yet uh, there's just uh, an aspect that I would like us to um, look at because a lot of these games they're not solely aimed for young people but majority are aimed for young people and usually it starts young and then people just grow up with them and they never grow out of it so some mm. never grow out of it others do and the ironic thing is though that the most popular ones like grand theft auto mm -hmm. and they are actually aimed at adults but mm. the majority of those who play them are not exactly adults you know are yeah. more younger teens and sometimes yeah if you play you know with headphones sometimes you hear some children you're like what call yeah. of duty and stuff so yeah anyway yeah 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 no no definitely that uh that is uh something that is very interesting there's a quotation that um, says the following that i would like to share and because i believe our young people are on the attack um, and i believe the reason why they are on the attack is that because uh, the evil one knows that the young people are going to finish god's work and if he can keep them engaged in all kind of other stuff, we would not be able to come together to actually finish the work that needs to get finished. I yes. always like to go, we are the Joshua generation. Uh, when we look at the typology between Israel, Israel actually taking over uh, Canaan, the promised land, it was the younger generation. It was the Joshua generation that actually made that final step. Yeah. So I believe that for us is the same. Mm -hmm. And... Um, there's a quotation that says the following. It says, With such an army of workers as our youth, rightly trained, might furnish how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior might be carried to the whole world. How soon might the end come, the end of suffering and sorrow and sin. How soon in place of a possession here, with its blight of sin and pain, our children might receive their inheritance, where the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever, where the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard. So, because young people are the army that are able to actually finish the work that needs to get finished they are under they are the, attack they are the target exactly sure. yep. so in other words our army is being attacked mm -hmm. the question is how do we protect our army from these attacks um, what do we do in order to make sure that we don't lose this war because we may have lost some battles here and there but we do not need to lose the war Amen. So, um, the question for you, um, how did you um, start dealing with uh, solving the problem? Uh, so, like I said, the first step is to have a relationship with God. Fortunately, I got to know God for myself from quite young because mm -hmm. of the uh, experience that I had. And so, I think without that mm -hmm. relationship with God on a personal level, I would probably never have seen it as an issue okay so relationship with god is like fundamental that young people learn that jesus is their friend mm -hmm. and that he is with them and he 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 
is the only one that is really able to be there for them always you know mm -hmm. like in no matter what happens in the, in life mm -hmm. um, but another thing that was crucial for me was once I realized that it was an issue because there's a difference between knowing that you have a problem and stopping you know mm -hmm. like you can't it's when you're addicted mm -hmm. God you need his help yeah. and you also need the practical solutions that he's provided. So one thing that helped me a lot was that I went to an outpost center in Austria. Mm -hmm. So it was like a, it was like a, oh, we have a dog, a yeah. friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, an outpost center in Austria. And it was a missionary school, medical missionary school. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I was there, I yeah had a lot of, I was practically busy all day mm -hmm. working with the people there guests health guests mm -hmm. also running different programs for for people who would come in or church members in the area just being very busy because essentially the place was a health center which was kind of like a hotel mm -hmm. almost like a health retreat place mm -hmm. and they did new start programs there okay. so just i learned the power of practical work like mm -hmm. being active with not just working with your brain but with your body and your hands as well mm -hmm. in the kitchen and around the house not mm -hmm. house but around the hotel yeah. uh, and I have to say like I learned to love to work there which mm -hmm. sounds weird you know like, uh -huh. <laughs> like why would you love to work but you can actually love to work no, and uh, that is a that essentially that made it that kind of closed the door for me to have the time mm -hmm. to spend on these on games you know because mm -hmm. i knew at that point that it was not good but i had time to play exactly. before so i would be i would struggle not to play but when i was there and we were busy with something that i saw was far more useful than mm -hmm. sitting and playing games for hours mm -hmm. uh, that made it yeah easy is a strong word but pretty much easy because yeah. i didn't even realize the time was just flying because i was involved in something so definitely that really helped me so there was a question or something that I was going to ask or uh, you made an interesting comment that you went to an outpost. And that is sometimes is a word that is used. Uh, some people know what we're talking about. Other people do have no idea what an outpost is. Mm -hmm. So I think we can just spend a little time in uh, explaining. You did explain a little bit what you were doing there. Um, but let me just give a definition and then you can tell me if that's kind of um, mm -hmm. correct or not. Um, an outpost normally generally is used as its army language as well. And we just spoke about how we uh, are supposed that our youth are the army. And if we train them right, they're able to finish the work. And an outpost um, is a station established at the distance from the main body of an army to protect it from surprise attacks. So an outpost is actually a retreat for soldiers. Mm -hmm. And our youth are the soldiers and they need a place, uh, a safe house yeah. in where they can, and now you were saying, they can do practical uh, duties. Yeah, it's like a place where they can essentially be pulled away from their day-to-day -day environment mm -hmm. and life and because many times yeah i don't know how much we'll talk about that but many times the reason why we enter into these things like mm -hmm. gaming or addiction to different types of media mm -hmm. is because the environment that we're in is not providing maybe it's an idle environment like mm -hmm. you know uh, idle and um yeah an outpost is a really good place for them to kind of almost teleport into a new world uh -huh. where they have yeah a different lifestyle wow yeah so that is uh, that is so cool and i hope like now it's a, a word that would um once we say it a lot of people would understand what we mean with an outpost especially in the context that we're talking about indeed our our soldiers mm -hmm. um and that need to um, be protected from all these attacks because we know that the evil one is attacking them on uh, an every weak point and he's attacking the mind yeah so i i have here some uh, when talking about what an outpost is is a missionary training facility in the country right mm -hmm. geared towards advancement of present truth in practical ways the goals being caring for the sick 
training medical missionaries, feeding the hungry, agriculture, providing shelter and useful labor, and ministering to the cities. Is this um, correct? Is this what you did uh, at TGM? Is, um, is that what an output supposed to be? Uh, well, I mean, if that's what it is. That's what no, I'm no, this is, a, this is something that oh, I put together. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I could be wrong. Well, <laughs> absolutely wrong. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's, pra- that's pretty much what we were doing. Yeah, we, were, we would go and reach out to the cities. And mm. what we saw, because this, this need for an outpost, as in a place for the youth to kind of teleport into a new environment, a mm. new lifestyle, mm-hmm. it's not only a need for the youth. It's mm. something that human beings, especially mm. nowadays with city life and people being just bombarded, mm-hmm. people need it. There are like so many retreats nowadays in thailand or all Mm -hmm. over the world that people are paying big money to be able to retreat and Mm -hmm. get away from the city life and get away and slow down and even a lot of people are doing a homestead and stuff like that so um it's a need that the young people have but it's a need that everybody has and Mm -hmm. uh, we would bring people from the city to come and we would uh, help them in different ways and they would join us with working and so yes that's what we did um in a nutshell Oh, great, great. So we're, we're on the same page, kind of. Kind of. Mm-hmm. Very good. So an outpost, and um, as you were talking about, one of the reasons that you got into this um, is idleness. Right? Into gaming. Into gaming. Uh, not into the outpost. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, the, um, there is a, an advice found in Adventist Home 284. It says, uh, one of the surest safeguards for the young is useful occupation had they been trained to industrial industrious habits so all their hours were usefully employed they would have no time for ripening at their lot for idle daydreaming Mm -hmm. they would be in little danger of forming vicious habits or associations Mm -hmm. and um, I think this hits the nail on its head yeah I mean we know the quote we know the saying idle hands are the devil's workshop." workshop Yeah, man. No, definitely. So that is, um, it shows that indeed um, we need to keep our young people engaged. Um, we need to have, uh, we need to train them. Um, there's another Bible text that uh, uh, in Proverbs that speaks about um, training our youth. Um, it says, um, in Proverbs talks about... Should I read it? Yes, if you have it, please um, read it. Train up a child in the way he should go, and yes. when he is old, he shall not depart from it. Yes, exactly. Um, train up a child in the way he shall go. And a lot of times that quotation is used for basically if a child is brought up into a Christian home or into our home, we have trained up a child. Um, but... Um, I read something very interesting that talks about sometimes we don't train, we tell. We tell a child what they shouldn't do. We tell them don't do this, do this, do that. Yeah. But um, do we actually train them? Mm-hmm. And what's the difference between training and telling? Probably that's something I would like to ask you. In your mind, what's the difference between training and telling? Because Solomon, obviously, he was speaking about training. Not uh, just telling. Not just telling. And mm-hmm. sometimes we claim, oh, we have... We, they grew up, they knew, and they will come back they at some time. They were around. They were around, <laughs> and they will come back. We think we have done our duty, but is there a dis- difference between training and telling? And um, well, you know, I'm not a parent. Just mm-hmm. disclaimer. Oh, but you're not a parent. I, uh, no, uh, I can tell you if it's right. Though. Yeah, he, he's a parent, <laughs> and, but um, I mean, from what I've understood, from from because but you're time, a child. I'm a child. So from that perspective, you can say something. Yes. <laughs> um, so when I was at the outpost center, I learned a lot about training. I mean, I'm not a parent, so I don't want to have any parents angry at me because they're like, what does she know? Mm-hmm. But um, I definitely I'll think back that, you up. Don't worry. that what I saw there was that, whoa, in my whole experience with stopping mm-hmm. from gaming, mm-hmm. is that actually nothing that people said to me was really instrumental or significant Mm -hmm. in me in me stopping Mm -hmm. it was all about the things that i saw people do you know Mm -hmm. Uh, that was really what impacted me the most and helped me to stop is because 
uh, when I was surrounded by people who were very industrious and who I admired because they were so diligent in working and mm -hmm. they were so pleasant and so cheerful and they they had recreation that was not uh, something that I couldn't see Jesus doing but mm -hmm. recreation that was actually wonderful and fun and I could imagine Jesus doing that mm -hmm. and so they had also a, an alternative uh, and I think this is a big part of what a difference between telling and training mm -hmm. uh, because you can tell someone not to do something but you can also help them along by doing certain things yourself mm -hmm. to help them because mm -hmm. um, then the problem is not just you deal with it and you solve it mm -hmm. but you can help them along so I saw really that by people making time to work with me you know like practically just do stuff together work on stuff together mm -hmm. in the kitchen or whatever mm -hmm. at the hotel um, those things all were probably the biggest influence on helping me to stop because it was a pro practical solution mm -hmm. that was that was offered to me in that sense you mm -hmm. know so instead of just saying don't do it they said oh let's um, do this together let's work on a garden together and mm -hmm. Um, and I know that that's difficult for parents who are busy and working and everything, but I believe that that's probably that's I think in my mind that's a big part of the difference between telling and mm. training. Mm. Training is really making yourself available mm. to be part of the solution, mm -hmm. really. Wow, and I think you're saying something very uh, important there. And um, as a parent, I can speak from that point of view um, as a parent you're trying to make ends meet a lot of times so um, I've been in that you I am in that position <laughs> you're trying to make ends meet so you're busy with business and uh, money and and just trying to arrange so many things at the same time while the child is there and then um, you want the best for them um, but a lot of times um, it's not uh, you don't have the time to invest into actual actually train yeah. so we leave it up to the school and, or the media or the, the media games. exactly or the games so um, and that is um, and that is where um, I think it goes wrong because I have to say I had an experience recently that I spoke to a young man who talked to me about this topic and mm -hmm. he pointed out that the reason he, he would like to do other things but he's always alone at home Mm -hmm. And what is he going to do, you know? So he, he's saying, essentially he's saying that he has all of this idle time and how is he ever going to stop when he, he has nothing to do? His, yeah. his family members are away and mm -hmm. so um, this, yeah, this is just a big part of the, often a big part of the origin of this addiction yeah. or, yeah, why it gets so bad. Uh, definitely. Um, I, I read recently uh, as well um, something it says if parents are so occupied with other things that they cannot keep their children usefully employed satan will keep them busy um Definitely. and i believe that is so true that's so true uh, he's very creative mm -hmm. that's why the games mm -hmm. uh, and all types of games um he has uh he has something flavor. for exactly yeah for the because you often you think you know the one who's like <gasps> killing yeah. people those are the gamers but mm. you have all kinds you have games that look so innocent mm -hmm. so like happy and beautiful you're like this must be a christian game <laughs> but then in the end it's like yeah. demonic so yeah. satan knows what he's doing he has something for everybody yeah no definitely and i have found that out myself as well because in the beginning we tried to indeed that keep our children away from screen time but as soon as you left an uh, inch um they want more hmm. and then it goes from one thing to the next it's 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 so well put together and um, that's why here we try to keep them busy with um, things outside and one of the greatest advice that we uh, have is to um, is to get them involved in agriculture uh, we actually understood that no line of manual training is of more uh, importance than agriculture and i don't know if you had any experience or what, what you guys did at tgm did you spend a lot of time in agriculture what has agriculture taught you i have to say uh, i definitely learned that i knew nothing about agriculture when i went there <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because uh yeah we had a garden there which a lot of the food we ate came from the garden mm. so i helped I didn't help as much as I could have because mm -hmm. uh, I was involved in media, media you know, where my okay. strength was. Uh -huh. But um, whenever I would, when I would, whenever I'd be assigned to the garden, I saw that it was 
I felt bad that it was something that I knew so little about. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I had at that point I had never I didn't even know like how seeds came <laughs> like how seeds work, germinate. You know, like, anything. <laughs> and I felt like such an idiot. <laughs> so I it showed me that I need to learn more of it and it showed me how um it's actually just like gaming and mm -hmm. other habits mm -hmm. but i had put all my time into gaming so that i had no desire for that and i saw other people who had grown up with it mm -hmm. and i wished that i had um Did that i could exposure. understand it because i saw that it is really enjoyable when you can grow your own food and you can see the fruits of your labor literally and um, eat them amen. so um i saw from the side of an outsider who didn't have that experience that I, w I would want if I would have children to mm -hmm. to make sure that they have that experience. Because, Definitely. Yeah. And I'm happy you mentioned that because indeed um, a lot of times agriculture people that are farmers are looked down upon like uh, the educated ones. And uh, um, in our mind, the ones that are educated are the ones that go to the university are behind a laptop and computer. And, mm -hmm. But as soon as you take a person out of that environment, you put them in a garden. It's <laughs> like, They're like... <laughs> apple where does apple it's, come from it's it's it they're lost and there is where i believe the education system that we have uh to to actually share with the world is one of balance um because we're not people need we need book learn people need to be educated but there is a i think there is a, a right order in doing things yeah and and, and, and i mean to have a healthy intellect mm -hmm. you need practical work as well mm -hmm. that's what i saw there as well i saw some of the most intelligent people i've ever met mm -hmm. who started school when they were like eight but mm -hmm. they grew up on a farm and they were and a lot like jesus jesus also learned all about nature and science but mm -hmm. not from a school you know mm -hmm. and so i saw as well that yeah if you really want somebody to be intelligent they mm -hmm. need to be active with their hands as well amen Amen. Yeah, that's why uh, I totally agree. Agriculture is to be the ABC of uh, true education. Uh, and I just have to say, as a disclaimer for our friends who might not be in the warm tropical area, uh -huh. uh, it's not as easy when it's not warm, I know. But I know people in like, if you ever see Norwegians mm -hmm. and whatnot, like these people, even in the cold snow, like uh -huh. super deep snow, they're outside all the time in the mountains, uh -huh. you know, and exploring. So. I I know because I live in Holland that mm. it's cold and it's she not always easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always as nice, but um, actually you can take joy in in the in being outside. It's precisely when it's cold sometimes mm -hmm. because it's so dark inside and whatnot. So I just wanted to say that so that you know that it's easy for us to talk here in the traffic, <laughs> but it's also yeah, yeah. She still lives in Holland. I live so in Holland, so I have to deal with it. She can feel with people that are not. <laughs> <laughs> here no but uh you're completely you're totally right and I, I believe all of us can enjoy agriculture wherever we are and um, as i was saying agriculture is, is to be the abc in education because there's so many lessons that we can learn from nature from planting from a germinating seed and a lot of the parables that jesus speaks about a lot of them we can't catch because we don't, we don't really have a clue we don't yeah. <laughs> understand uh, what he's really speaking about yeah. so even to have a better spiritual knowledge and understanding of the word of god mm -hmm. agriculture plays such an, an uh, important role yeah and again um back to eden where did god put us first he put us in a garden so there is there are there is an environment that god wants us to be we're designed to be we're designed to be indeed for us to um optimally learn yeah and um and i believe so that that is a very uh, very important one um, that um, parents and children can get involved together because honestly when we came here we didn't know much about agriculture either. really oh, i really? didn't know that yeah, really. my I'm dad not the only one <laughs> my dad knows uh much and we started to do some things in holland in the netherlands so i know it's possible um, and then when we came here, uh, this place makes it very easy <laughs> <laughs> because we have, um, yeah, you can grow year round here, so which is uh, quite unique. Um, but um, why I believe this particular one dealing with agriculture, and we're talking about practicality and how useful labor is so important for our young people. 
within in our world what is one of the greatest problems that we face inactivity in inactivity yes but what about poverty what about people that don't have enough to eat um, what about what Jesus actually admonishes us to do in Isaiah 58 um, is which is to feed the poor which is to um, uh, take care of those that don't have and uh, I believe a part of why agriculture is important is that we are able to reach needs in our community mm -hmm. um, if you look at the numbers of people that are uh, go malnourished or don't um, have sufficient food um, I, I, I think there's a great work for us as a church and as a people to uh, to do in that respect and sometimes indeed when you're behind a game those things you're out of the reality of the situation because you have you have food yeah you have a bag of chips next to you and um, you have Soda. drink uh, mm. but once you're in the soil you understand how much food you can actually grow and then you understand that once you grow you don't have you can't eat it all so what's the next natural step oh I have to start sharing and their ministry becomes easy so uh, this topic is uh, quite interesting and now definitely we're talking about agriculture and how agriculture can actually help to uh, in more areas um, also practically in, uh, in mission yeah. um, that's something that we we'll, are trying to do here as well on Sunday we um, will be going on a visit um, so you can see what we're doing over there so probably we can continue our conversation uh, in part, uh, with part two on uh, media and the mind so yes. hopefully you guys can join us the next time we we'll show you some footages of um, what we're doing in Caldera. Many blessings until the next time.